Mm. Okay. So, we have been looking at 1D Euler equations, one dimensional Euler equations dou q dou t plus dou e dou x equals 0. We have seen FTCS, we have seen sort of FTCS applied, FTCS and BTCS applied to this and BTCS applied to this, okay. Right, we have seen the BTCS applied to it, backward time central space applied to it in delta form. We have also seen that FTCS can also be interpreted as being in the delta form, right. That is basically, so this equation, uh, we could write this as I plus, I just want to make one observation, delta T dou by dou X A acting on delta Q is minus delta T into R and we had noted, we had registered, right, we had noted that I delta Q equals minus delta T into R. So, this is backward time that is backward time and this is forward time. So, in fact, if you use central differences to discretize R, right and central differences to discretize that, then it becomes backward time central space and forward time central space. So, I delta Q which is delta Q is nothing but R minus delta T into R, right. So, another way to look at it, I just want to just point out another way to look at this would be that the BTCS as I had indicated you can delta Q and now I will say I stick an I in there to say implicit equals delta Q explicit. Am I making sense? It is like we are calculating the explicit correct, uh, the correction, explicit correction and from there getting the implicit correction. That is a different way to look at. So, any algorithm you should try to see the, look at the algorithm from different points of view. It may give you some insight, right. It is always a, it was, it is always a good idea to try to look at it from uh, different points of view. I just wanted to point that out before we left this form. In the last class, we had looked at application of boundary conditions using characteristics, right? And I promised that in this class we would start off looking at a finite volume method. But before I leave the finite difference class of schemes, let me just do one last thing that comes from what we have been doing in the uh, class so far. Now, instead of multiplying this by the uh, x inverse, x being the matrix of eigenvectors. I am going to go back and multiply this by x inverse which is what we had done right in the beginning, right because this business of splitting uh, the waves based on which way they are travelling could give us a hint as to how to generate a new scheme that is the idea. I just want to point out, so every little thing that we do see typically what happens is you are trying to solve a problem, you are trying to solve a problem, you have a, uh, you have a local issue that you fix, you say oh I have to apply boundary conditions, I want to do it better, how do I do it? and you are thinking imagining ways by which you can fix that, solve that particular problem. But you should also realize that you may come up with something or there may be clues by ways by which you can generate other techniques, right, other techniques. So for instance, if you take this and if you were to multiply it dou q dou t plus, I will write it in the non-conservative form in conservative variables a dou q dou x equals 0. And if I were to pre-multiply this by x inverse, x is the matrix of eigenvectors. This gives me dou q tilde uh, dou q caret dou t plus lambda dou q caret dou x equals 0, right. Where the matrix lambda is u 0, 0. 0 u plus a 0, 0 0 u minus a. Is that fine? So, we have already seen that in the problem that we were looking at, the problem that we are looking at, right, that uh, these two are basically propagating left to right and this one is propagating 
q1 q3 hat right to left okay so this lambda can be partitioned into lambda plus plus lambda minus okay so lambda plus will have the right running characteristics and lambda minus as you would expect will have the left running characteristics see I have just so characteristics that propagate right to left I am calling the left running characteristics characteristics that propagate right to left I mean left to right I am sorry now I am getting my lefts and rights confused <laughs> I see a few smiles in the right. So prop, uh, characteristics that propagate from left to right I will face the board right left to right as seen on the board okay which are like this are right running characteristics make sure that I do not get them get that confused so that is T that is X uh, U so that would correspond to u plus a and that would correspond to u fine right so they will go from left to right thank you see the more I keep on explaining the left to right till you point out to me that I have made some other mistake otherwise I see question marks on your face and that is lambda minus okay are we, are we set fine. Okay, so these have only the right running characteristics and these have only the left running characteristics okay sort of okay by left running characteristics I mean characteristics that propagate right to left. So if I wanted to go back now if I wanted to go back now to the original coordinate system what I would basically do is I would pre multiply this by x you understand what, what I mean so we transformed from we transform from the primitive variables rho, rho u, rho e t using x inverse to q1 hat, q2 hat, q3 hat okay. Now I am transforming back, I am pre multiplying by x, I am transforming back. So this lambda I am going to see what happens to it if I pre multiply this by x because matrix multiplication distributes over and if I pre -multi post multiplied by x inverse matrix multiplication distributes over addition so this gives me a equals some a plus plus a minus is that okay everyone and in this particular case I have an easy way to get out for these equations if I were to multiply this equation by if I were to multiply this equation by q what would I get a q was e which is e plus plus e minus right I have split the fluxes of course the other thing is <coughs> you could go back there and you could multiply by delta q okay that is a different that is a different scheme. So what you basically get here is therefore dou q dou t plus dou e plus dou x plus dou e minus dou x equals 0 okay where I have basically split I have basically split the fluxes into two parts I will let you do the I will let you do the, the algebra for this is not uh, not that difficult right so I let you do the algebra for this I am not going to do it. So what have we managed to do here what 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 is the consequence of this we hope we hope that you could uh, this corresponds to what is the this corresponds to eigenvectors that are eigenvalues that are propagating in this direction okay right so we should use what kind of spatial derivatives backward space right we should use backward space here so you use backward space here you 
you use forward space here. Is that fine? Okay. Right. So you could, in fact, try instead of using just a two-point backward space. If you still want second-order representation for your spatial derivatives, you can try using a higher-order backward space. You can use a three-point backward space. Right. Last class when we were talking about applying boundary conditions more accurately, we have already talked about. That's what I'm saying. There are you have all the bits and pieces now. Right. It's just a matter of coming up with a scheme with all the taking the combinations. So very often it is a matter of being alert. The individual ideas, the, all the ideas are there. Now it is just a matter of being alert and making that match saying that oh I can try to do this and see what happens. Okay, right? Is that fine? So you could do, use backward space here, forward space here and forward time if you want, right? And forward time. Is that fine? Any questions? Okay, so with this, this of course, when I'm saying backward space, forward space, I'm talking still in terms of finite differences, right? So as promised in the last class, what we will do is we'll try to look at uh, finite volume methods. We had talked about it when we are doing the one-dimensional wave equation, the quasi-linear wave equation. We had talked about it when we are talking about the one-dimensional quasi-linear wave equation. So, and since it is one-dimensional flow, if you want I can draw that tube again that I had. I had a pipe last time. So, I will have, I will draw the pipe. So, that is the pipe. So, at this point we have the grid point P. At that point we have the grid point P. At this point we have P-1. And at this point, we have p plus one. These intermediate values are p plus half, p plus half, and p minus half. Is that fine? p plus half and p minus half. Okay. Is that okay? Just like we did in our derivation, we have an outward normal n here. Outward normal n there. So, the control volume that we are talking about, that is the control volume we are talking about, that is the control volume we are talking about, is that fine? So if you say you have, what was the integral form of the equation, do you remember? Integral form of the equation, integral Q, if you want uh, X psi comma tau or psi comma t d psi over x p minus half to x p plus half psi is some kind of a running coordinate d by d t time rate of change of the amount of q that you have in right. We will take the area to be unit area right now, that is the control volume. This is the amount of Q that is there in that volume. This is at the rate at which it is changing, time rate of at which it is changing is the integral, what is it? E dot n, E is the flux, vector E dot n ds over s with a minus sign because n is an outward norm. S in this case goes from x p minus half, is that right? Over s. So s is a unit area. It has to be this minus that, right? So this turns out to be e p minus. E p minus half, E p plus half, E well E is a vector but E is a vector that is either pointed this way that is the vector E, it has only one component or it has only the x component, is that fine, right? E is a vector which has only one component. So E dot E here will be the E that we know. 
right which is a matrix remember that E itself is a matrix it is a it is E i if you want it in Cartesian coordinates where this E is rho u rho u squared plus p rho e t right and this is the unit vector i am I making sense that is what I mean okay is that fine. By doing this I am basically doing all the all the equations mass, momentum and energy conservation in one shot okay. Yeah so what do we get I have a minus sign E p plus half minus E p minus half is that fine okay. I will replace this I will replace this by an average value in the volume this is what we did even there right I will replace this by an average volume the average value in the volume which I will call QP okay so this becomes D by DT QP delta X equals minus E p plus half minus E p minus half right and you can see that you can see one of the reasons why I want to go through that is you can see the equivalence between the finite volume method and finite difference method here okay that you get the same equation as I said we can get into all sorts of discussions about what scheme where. Uh, but sometimes quite a few of these will come out with the same kinds of equations right but they are not quite the same similar equations but not quite the same what is the difference here we have the fluxes at here we have the fluxes at E p plus half we have p plus half and p minus half am I making sense we have the fluxes at some intermediate value right so what does this have to do with what, do, what was the motivation for doing finite volume method why did I suggest this yesterday what does this have to do with application of boundary conditions well what we said was instead of applying instead we know that we can apply boundary conditions we can apply boundary conditions we now know how to apply boundary conditions on the whole domain right so you have two incoming characteristics one outgoing characteristic. So for a large domain we use this idea right these correspond to u, u plus c, u plus a, u minus a, u oops u, u plus a, u minus a okay these correspond to those those characteristics. The proposal last time was why not shrink this down why not shrink this down to a small volume why not shrink this down to a small volume this whole pipe that you have we can shrink it down so we break this big pipe into small pieces like this I am just separating out the individual pieces you break it down into small individual pieces like this small volumes and look at the ideas that we generated for boundary conditions and see where that takes us okay since uh, here uh, this material I am only going to be I am only going to be giving you the motivation you understand what I am saying that is we will we will I will show you that yes it is possible to use these characteristics it is possible there is a possibility that we can reconstruct right there is a need to find the value of the flux at the intermediate point which we have already seen what is the way by which we can estimate it okay and there is a whole gamut of schemes huge number of schemes on estimating the flux right at that interface am I making sense so I am not as usual I am not going to get into it I just want to present the basic ideas okay is that fine. So let us get back let us look at an interface so I have this I have an interface that is the interface so that is uh, p or p plus half or whatever it is that is the interface. So I, the label itself does not matter so at this interface what do I have 
or at this uh, at this point let us pick p at the point p what do I have we will look at the interface later at the at the at point p what do I have I have three characteristics one corresponding to u plus a one corresponding to u one corresponding to u minus a is that fine <coughs> on the left hand side on the left hand side I have the state we can call it u l so I have uh, I have u l rho l p l these are the state state variables that I have right or you have q 1 hat this is going to get messy l q 2 hat l q 3 hat l is that fine to the right here I have q 1 hat r q 2 hat r q 3 hat r across this across this I have a jump t, d q u minus a across that I have a jump d q 3 hat right across this I have a jump d q 3 hat across that line fine. So the question is what happens to d q 3 hat d q 3 hat is propagated along that that is what our equation says right q 3 hat. So what we basically have here is when you cross the first characteristic <coughs> when you first cross the first characteristic what does this characteristic say remember uh, let me go, let us go back to the linear wave equation uh, dou u dou t dou u dou t plus a dou u dou x equals 0. So if you had a step if you had a step if your initial condition was a step right so this was ul this is ur the characteristic was 1 over propagated with 1 over a. So to the left of this is the state U L. To the right of this is the state U R. Is U R. That is U L. Am I making sense? Okay. So in a similar fashion, here when you uh, cross the characteristic corresponding to U minus A, only Q three L changes to Q three R. Only Q three hat changes. Does that make sense? Only Q three hat changes. So in this in between region q3 hat in this in between region q3 hat becomes q3 hat r okay in a similar fashion so in this range in this range in this in this range from here you have q3 hat r what happens when you cross the u line q1 hat will change am i making sense so then beyond this you get q1 hat r okay and beyond here of course the jump will be in q2 hat r am i making sense so it's actually possible for us to use these characteristics to figure out what is this change what is the change in state as you cross each characteristic if you know the conditions on the left hand side so it is like saying that if I have a small uh, locally if I have a small shock tube a small jump right so what 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 is it what are what how is that jump going to propagate how are those what are the characteristics corresponding <coughs> right I have a small shock tube I have a small diaphragm small pressure difference I break the I break the diaphragm and we have a shock tube problem and we are asking the question the jump is very small the jump is very small so I seem to have assumed here what have I assumed here in drawing these characteristics like this I seem to have assumed A is constant I have seemed to have assumed that capital A is constant right I seem to have assumed that capital A is constant because capital A is constant the propagation speed and the eigenvalues are eigenvalues are constant right and therefore these curves have a constant slope so locally around here or if A is constant or if the jumps are very small right so that the a is constant we can derive linearized equations you have seen it in gas dynamics I am not going to derive the equations here 
but if A is comes from a system which is sort of a small perturbation system right or A is essentially constant then these characteristic lines turn out to be straight lines right these characteristic lines turn out to be even otherwise they are straight lines and when you cross them you have to think about this and when you cross them the q1 hat q2 hat q3 hat depending on which characteristic you cross the state will change right so it is actually possible for us to it seems starting from here moving into the future to predict what is going to happen it looks like that right there is a possibility here. Now we go back to the volume now if you look at the volume it is like you have the u minus a characteristic that is coming in this is at time q this is at time q plus 1 you have the u minus a characteristic coming in and you have the u plus a characteristic again as I said just to give you a trouble I deliberately choose it so that it goes down uh, goes through but anyway it does not matter we, we, I, 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 it does not matter so this is u plus a that is u So in this volume we actually know what we can actually take you know what are the states at the various levels we can actually reconstruct right we can actually reconstruct a function am I making sense if you if I tell you if I tell you what is on this side what is on that side it is possible for me to actually reconstruct the function along this line right because I know what is the value I know what is the value through this through past u. I know what is the value that is coming say past u from there so I know the value of I know what is the value of q1 hat there I know the q1 hat I know what is q1 what q1 hat is doing there am I making sense right in a similar fashion I know what I know what is the q1 hat I know q1 hat for instance is doing something like that right I know q2 hat I know q2 hat is doing something similar q2 hat is basically just a constant q2 hat they are not to scale right q2 hat these graphs are not to scale right okay q2 hat is just doing something like that right and q3 hat again is the same thing q3 hat may be somewhere in between q3 hat is right so in the volume I know the variations I, I know the variation in fact right through I know the variation of q1 hat q2 hat and q3 hat I can actually reconstruct okay so the whole class of schemes that are basically based on this kind of a reconstruction is that fine okay right so it is possible for us it is possible for us to reconstruct and get so using it looks like uh, we are sort of using this idea of characteristics we are sort of using this idea of characteristics right it is possible for us to come up with a class of schemes as I said what I want to do is I want to sort of uh, bring this uh, just to give you an idea of time where you are we are most probably now uh, by way of large volume of research somewhere in the mid 80s okay by the, by the time the large volume of research started we are most probably somewhere <coughs> in the 80s okay back here is there a way there is another issue there is another uh, factor that I want to talk about so if I have uh, p minus 1 and I have p okay and we have the issue of finding e at p minus half we have the question of finding at e at p minus half right we have the issue of finding e at p minus half of course we can look at these characteristics and try to estimate the state at that point using these characteristics the other possibility is and in order to do that in order to do that right the other possibility of course there are other possibilities the other possibilities what were the possibilities we looked at right in the beginning you can just take averages so we could say that e p minus half let us get rid of the simple possibilities first is e p plus e p minus 1 right we will just eliminate first eliminate just recollect what what were the other possibilities we had e p minus half these are possible definitions I will say e p minus half for all of them but these are possible definitions 
I am not going to use different symbols for E p minus half could be E of q plus q p minus half where q p minus half is q p minus half plus q p am I making sense q p minus 1 q p minus 1 thank you q p minus 1 plus q p right this is the other way to do it these are two possible ways to do it so basically what you say is you say that the e the e the state there is determined by the the value of e there is determined by the state of q there one possibility is that you say that actually I do not need the q at the interface the value of e there is just the average of the e is at the 2 these are what we have considered so far this is what we have considered so far what we have to realize is that we are trying to do a interpolation of some kind okay what we are trying to do is an interpolation of some kind we have seen that if we knew the characteristics and a was constant and a was constant we could actually do an interpolation of some kind using characteristics okay the question is what is the a what is that propagation speed you have a state a here you have a state a there you have an a you have a capital a you have a capital a p minus 1 here you have a capital a p plus 1 here what is the a that you use one possibility is you take the average of a see there is no limit to this one possibility is you take the average of a am I making sense one possibility is that you take average of a what is the other what 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 else can we do in order to do what I had indicated earlier you say a p minus half is one half a p minus 1 plus a p so that you know the a then what these are possibilities right these are possibilities but actually there are certain uh, basic relationships that I want the a's the e's and the q's to satisfy right and this satisfies one of them this basically says that e at this e at this point is e of q at that point and we are starting with the q am I making sense right this is just like I said earlier if you extrapolate both pressure if pressure is prescribed at the exit and you extrapolate both the density and temperature then it is possible that you actually have an inconsistency you have to be careful right because there is an equation of state that ties all, all of them together. So in a similar fashion we have governing equations and relationships if you just start taking averages then there is always this fear that there is going to be a mismatch okay. So what we would like to do is we would like to look at get back here we like to look at right we would like to look at some uh, relationship between a e and q and that we have in the definition that is a equals do e do q or a is a derivative and therefore we know that d e is a d q right this is the definition of the derivative fine definition of a directional derivative. I am going to draw this as though I am doing it in uh, regular one dimensional dealing with scalars but actually we understand that this is a vector of 3 elements that is a vector of 3 elements right and this is a 3 by 3 system which is 9 elements I am making sense but I am going to do the explanation using uh, just scalars for now. So what are the things that we have been doing so far okay what are the things that we have been doing so far everything that we have done so far this is the x axis this is uh, either q or e or whatever dependent variable this is what we have been doing so far so we have uh, p minus 1 p and we want the intermediate value somewhere right it is possible that this intermediate value it is possible that the intermediate value because we are taking equal intervals is actually in the middle is actually in the middle if you are taking unequal intervals it may not even be in the middle right that brings up a whole other 
bunch of issues as to taking the averages and so on. So when we just take the average EP plus half, EP minus half, what are we saying? So if you have a variation of the, if you have a variation of E, if you have a variation of E or you have a variation of Q, by taking EP plus half, EP minus half, what are we saying? What is the value that we are taking in between? You are taking, you are joining these two by a straight line and taking the mid value, right? You are taking the mid value, that is basically what you are doing. And of course, depending on how this function varies, that mid value may or may not be a value at that point, right? The function could essentially be, the function could essentially be flat and then drop rapidly. Am I making sense? Okay, right? So this is, it is a matter of representing, what is it that we are representing? Am I making sense? Okay. So if you look at, if you look at do, do E do X, if you look at do E do X, if you look at do E do X at this point, if you look at do E do X at that point, it is the tangent to the curve. I will draw a bigger picture. Let me just, I will forget the coordinates, I will just draw a bigger picture. Okay, so you could have a nice smooth curve like that. You know, you could have a strangely behaved curve like that. Also, a nice smooth curve. This is the chord. That's a chord for both of them. At the midpoint, this is the tangent. That's the tangent for that. At the midpoint, of course, this is the tangent for that. Is that fine? And at this point, do E do X, do E do X, do E do X could either be that tangent or this tangent. If you were to take an average, you would actually be representing it by the chord. Am I making sense? Okay. So the chord, in some sense, yeah, it's it is. Mean value theorem says, in fact, for the white one, you can see that it is almost parallel. Right? Mean value theorem basically tells us that somewhere along the line, it is going to be parallel to it. It just so happens that in this case, in the case of the red curve, it is somewhere there, it is some other point. The point can vary, it can go, it can be at different points, right? but it is possible for us to actually approximate, approximate this. In reality, what we want to do is we want to approximate this by a straight line, fine. In reality, what we are trying to do, in reality, what we are trying to do is we want to approximate the function by a straight line. If you think about it, that is basically what we are trying to do. We are trying to approximate the function by a straight line. The normal two possibilities that you have is either the tangent or the chord. You either approximate the function using the chord or you use the approxi approximate the function using the tangent, fine, because we are, we are actually performing an integration, finally. So you are trying to approximate the function, okay. The other way to look at it is we are trying to approximate this tangent using this chord. But typically we are trying to approximate the function using the chord. We are trying to find some linear approximation to our function. That is typically what we are trying to do, okay. Then the question is what is that, what is the best possible approximation, okay. The two things that we looked at is we do a linear interpolation for Q or we do a linear interpolation directly for E, so the two possibilities we considered. The third possibility that we just threw out now is that we try a linear interpolation for A, which is the slope that we are looking at, am I making sense, which is the slope that we are looking at, fine. It is possible that the error that we are making, the reason why we have difficulties with this, the error that we are making is that we are interpolating these quantities we are interpolating these quantities on the x coordinate axis, right. But in reality, E is a function of Q and this is really what we want to approximate. This is the tangent, this is the, this is the tangent, this is the tangent, not DE DX, not DQ DX. The tangent that we are talking about is here, this is the tangent that we are trying to represent, okay. Am I making sense? Or E as a function of Q is what we are trying to represent. And the question is, is the tangent better or is the chord better? Okay. 
So the chord typically especially when you look at functions like this red curve here the chord typically is a uh, on the average a better representation okay. So basically what you do is we convert this to increments and we will say we look at delta E equals some A delta Q delta E is some A delta Q this A is some average A this A is some average A am I making sense this A is some average A that needs to be determined it is some average A and not necessarily this A it is not necessarily this A this A is some average A that is not necessarily this A and it needs to be determined. So in the E Q I write E and Q but I am only drawing one coordinate right I am only drawing, still doing it only as a scalar in the E Q space we know what is delta Q and we know what is delta E what do we want to find? We want to find the A, we want to find that average A. So we want to find the average A. As I said, I draw one dimensions. In one dimension, given two points, the line through it is unique. In two dimensions, if I have a surface, right, E Q, E as a function of Q, let us not look at it as 3 by 3, let us look at it in two dimensions, right. So you have Q1, Q2, E1, E2. So we won't forget E1, E2. Let's look at this E1. You have Q1, Q2. You have a surface. I give you two points. Then infinity of planes that go through that point. Those two points. Right. So we need we need some way we need some way to make sure that we are picking. Right. We need some way to constrain. So what we basically say is, I want this A of A. Right. I want a Q. I want a Q. Uh, p plus p minus half or p plus half or whatever I want a q p plus half p minus half I want an estimate of that I want this a to equal a at q p minus half am I making sense okay the geometrical uh, we, we get back just in case I mean just in case you did not get the, the why there are multiple planes you look at it look at it directly here what do we have how many components do we have here this is this looks like an equation ax equals b right this looks like this is a vector matrix vector right okay so normally what you do is you are given this you are given that and you are asked to find this that is the usual problem that you are used to in linear algebra and matrix algebra here the problem is you are given delta E, you are given delta Q, you want to find A. How many how many unknowns do you have in A? You have 9. Well, if A is going to have the structure of, is going to have this structure, you may not actually have 9. But in theory, you have 9, right? But you have only 3 equations. There are lots of solutions. There are lots of solutions. But fortunately for us, this A, the first few entries of this A are something like 0, 1, 0 or whatever it is. There is at least one line of them that is just gone, okay, right. There is one set of them by placing this constraint, by placing this requirement which we can argue in a physically intuitive fashion, right. We have sort of eliminated, we have, we have eliminated, right, that it have the structure. We are saying something about what does the structure look like, okay. By insisting on a certain structure, we have already eliminated a whole bunch of unknowns. But the difficulty that we have is that this, we need given this vector and given that vector we need to determine A that is the problem that we have is that okay. What is delta E I will just set it up and see what difficulties we have what is the problem and then we will see whether we are able to okay what is delta E. delta rho u delta rho u squared plus p delta rho e t is 
O e t plus I am thinking of delta q O e t plus p times u it looked a little too easy okay and of course you can you can expand this out but we leave the delta rho u as it is right now that is delta rho u squared plus delta p and this is delta rho e t delta rho e t times u plus delta p times u fine and what is delta q delta q is delta rho delta rho u delta rho e t okay so do you remember the values of a does anyone have the values of a otherwise i'll do you have the values of a Gamma minus three by two U three minus gamma gamma minus one. Into U. that is what we have fine actually there is a reason why I expanded this normally I would not go through this headache there is a reason why I expanded this what do we have here need just by inspection because this is we are setting up for right we are setting up for the next class basically what do we have here we have uh, we have ET we have P really if I look at this in terms of the kinds of unknowns that I am going to have I have ETs and I have a P right I have a rho and a U is that it right okay now you think back to your thermodynamics you think back to your thermodynamics there is a combination of ET and P that we have a term right if we switch instead of total energy if we switch to total enthalpy then we can absorb the P you can potentially get rid of the p from the equation am i making sense okay we can potentially so we'll retain that is I, I, the reason why i'm writing this out is we'll retain the a remember if you did a change of variables the jacobian changed you're going to retain this equation to this equation to the jacobian equation we're going to do a change of variables am i making sense okay so what we propose to do now is tomorrow i'll write out the equations in terms of enthalpy in terms of enthalpy so that I will have a total enthalpy here instead of the pressure term okay so we will try to write out the equation in terms of the total enthalpy see if we can get rid of the pressure in some form okay so that all the pressure terms will be written in terms then we will have only we will have only the enthalpy rho and u <coughs> rho u okay right and see where we can go from there is that fine. So in tomorrow's class what I will do is I will start off with that I will start off with the enthalpy part and we will go back and we will try to solve this equation we will try to solve this equation we will see what this gives us when we try to get in terms of delta rho delta rho delta rho u right and uh, delta rho h t or something of that sort fine and why are we looking at deltas because at in one at one level those would be the jumps across any given interface right across the right there would be there would be basically so we look or you can look at it as if I have uh, two points either spatially distributed or distributed in our in our uh, state space so to speak so if you have u left and u right and you are trying to figure out what is the interpolant that I should use given that I have u left and u right we can actually use it do it here instead of doing it there 
okay especially if you are talking in terms of oh I have a small small jump right then this kind of a discussion does not make sense right even these graphs do not make sense right whereas a discussion here in the function space may still make sense is that fine okay that is the idea right. So in the next class we will basically derive uh, the averaging process we will derive the averaging process after that on uh, the subsequent class I will try to do a, a demo for you okay and uh, then we will move on to other other uh, we will leave 1D flow equations at this point right and go on to other schemes fine thank you.